Where I live in Canada, inflation has been running very high the last few years. And because of this, the price of groceries has been impacted and this is top of mind for many. And part of our work in the home is to provide good, healthy, nourishing meals for our family. And when grocery prices are high, it can be difficult to strike that balance between providing healthy meals and keeping our budget as low as possible. But the good news is, is that some of the most nutrient dense and healthy foods are some of the least expensive that you can buy in the grocery store. So let's talk about a few of them today. I did some research on what registered dietitians and holistic nutritionists recommend, and these are just a few of the foods. And we may have to do a part two because there are certainly more than I can put into one video. And if you like that, I'm certainly happy to do it. But let's get started. First up is cabbage. Now cabbage is one of the least expensive greens that you can buy and it's a very humble vegetable related to the same family as broccoli, cauliflower and Brussels sprouts and it comes with a load of health benefits. In fact one cup of cabbage contains 56% of your daily value of vitamin K which improves your bone strength and 36% of your daily value of vitamin C and 10% of your folate requirement. And it's also very high in antioxidants that helps fight inflammation and improves your immune system. And one study actually showed that people who ate lots of cruciferous vegetables, including cabbage, had considerably lower levels of inflammation compared to those who ate the lowest amounts. So put this into stir fries with some other veggies or roast it with some garlic and olive oil and it is delicious. Also, if you have a bag of carrots sitting in your fridge right now, now dig them out because these are a powerful tool to help you maintain optimum health. Now carrots are full of many vitamins to help support our organs but they're most well known for supporting our eye health and good vision because they are rich in beta carotene which gets converted to vitamin A and you don't need much just a half cup serving of raw carrots gives you 50% of your recommended dose of vitamin A. And also carrots are inexpensive. They'll last several weeks in the fridge. So grate them and put them into muffins, add them to salads or roast them up. The other thing is if you can try to buy organic carrots just because carrots can absorb some of the pesticides from the soil. And if you can't buy organic, that's totally fine. Just make sure you wash them really well and peel them. Eating fish is good for your heart and your brain health, but buying fresh fish can be expensive. And you might be wondering, is canned fish a good option? And the answer is a resounding yes. The nutritional profile of things like canned salmon, tuna, sardines, beans, kippered herring, and other types of fish are pretty much on par with fresh and they have just as much protein and heart healthy omega-3s as fresh fish as well. Now one thing I am looking at maybe tweaking in my pantry a little bit is I have some uh, fish that is packed in soya oil and then I have others that are packed in olive oil and I'm going to be putting more of a focus on the ones that are packed either in water or olive oil just because the um, soy oils aren't as healthy as the olive and these ones that are packed in olive oil are imported from Italy. The reason why the tuna from Italy is so good is because it's harvested at a sooner time in the tuna's life cycle so that the mercury levels are much lower. And also if you get skipjack tuna packed in water, that's also lower in mercury, but the one you want to avoid is albacore because that is one of the highest mercury levels that there is in packaged tuna. But canned fish, absolutely a yes. So go ahead if you enjoy it. And if you're looking for smoother skin, almonds are a great choice because they are a vitamin E rich food. One serving of almonds, which is about a quarter cup, gives you about 50% of your daily recommended value of vitamin E, which supports your skin health. 
Almonds can also be helpful to lower LDL or bad cholesterol levels and are rich in magnesium, which can help lower blood pressure a little bit. So sprinkle them onto cereal or salads or eat them plain for a great snack. There's something very soothing about having a cup of tea and many types of tea are good for you, but green tea in particular has some amazing health benefits. Drinking a couple cups a day can help lower your blood pressure a little bit and help keep your heart healthier. The catechins found in green tea have been associated with supporting overall heart health and help to combat oxidative stress, which is a factor linked to cardiovascular issues. Also, green tea helps us with our mental health as well because the amino acid L-theanine is found in green tea and promotes relaxation and reduces stress levels. So sipping some green tea can help you find a few moments of calm as you go about your day. And this is the one that I've been drinking lately. It's the Gen Maicha and it's Japanese tea and it has roasted rice. So it has like a little bit of kind of a nutty, smoky flavor, which is really, really lovely. Now the next item I'm going to show you is small but mighty and that is lentils and these are tiny but they are packed with nutrients. There's all kinds of different varieties of lentils. There's red ones, brown ones, green ones and the exact nutritional information can vary a little bit between the types but they all have the same very basic health benefits and that is protein, fiber and antioxidants. The protein found in lentils help build and repair your muscles and help support your immune system and also helps you feel full. And as far as fiber goes, lentils have more fiber than a lot of other beans and it actually is easier to digest as well. And lentils also contain polyphenols and it's a type of antioxidant that helps reduce inflammation and helps protect your cells from damage, reducing your risk of heart disease and and some types of cancer. And now I want to share with you a traditional rustic and hearty Italian dish that features some of the ingredients that we talked about today and that is zuppa al lenticchie or lentil soup and it's very simple to put together using easy common ingredients and I'll show you how we do it. Now this step is optional, but if I have time, I like to soak the lentils for a couple of hours just to soften them and cut down on the cooking time a bit. But you don't have to do this step if you don't want to. And let's get some ambiance going. We're going to start by cutting up one onion. Three cloves of garlic. Two carrots, and a couple stalks of celery. Now we're going to heat a few tablespoons of olive oil over medium heat. Add the onion and cook for about 10 minutes or so just till it starts to turn golden. Add in the celery carrot and garlic and one can of tomato paste and we're going to cook this for another few minutes. Now in Italian this mixture is called a sofrito. Add the lentils and six cups of water, a bit of salt, pepper, and Italian seasoning. And I also put in one bouillon cube. And this is optional, but I also like to add in one teaspoon of honey to sweeten the pot. Put the lid on and let simmer for about 40 minutes. At the very end, add in six cups of spinach and stir just until it's wilted. And now you can top it off with some Parmesan and serve up a rustic bowl of nourishing soup. Take care everyone and we'll catch you in the next one.